this little example app, I have a list of products, and I would like to give the user the ability to search these products using a variety of fields. Now I could create the search from scratch, but here I want to demonstrate using a gem called Ransack. This gem is known to be the successor to MetaSearch, which I covered in episode 251. Once you get it set up, it allows you to create complex search forms with ease. The first step, as you can probably guess, is to go into the gem file of your application and add the Ransack gem there, and then run the bundle command to install it. Next, go into the action you want to add the search functionality to, in this case it's the products controller index action, and you can make a search object here by calling product.search, and then passing in the queue parameters, which will be a hash of all the search parameters that the user will pass in using Ransack. And then to get the found products, you can just call uh, search.result. The last step is to go into the view template for that action and make the form. Now, Ransack provides a form builder for doing so called search form four, and then you pass in that search object into this. And then the uh, form builder is passed in uh, through the block. And then in here, I can make a new field and I'll just use a quick TextMate snippet to do so. And the name of this field is very important. It determines how the search is performed. So if we give it a name such as name contains, C-O-N-T, then it's going to uh, look for products that contain that given text in the name. I'm also going to uh, change this label here so it's a little bit more descriptive. And we also need a button, so I'll add a div with the class of actions and toss in a submit button here. Let's call it search. Let's try this out. When I reload the page, here we have our search form, and I can type some text in here and it will instantly find any products that contain that in their name. So this is pretty powerful because we can easily add more functionality to the search by simply adding more fields in the view. No other logic is needed elsewhere. For example, we could easily add search functionality for the price range by creating a new field labeled uh, price, let's say greater than or equal to, and I'll give this uh, label a name, let's say price between this value and price is less than or equal to that given value. And reload the page, and there's our new search field, which we can, let's say, search between $10 and $20, and then we search, and it limits that to only the products which match that price. Now, if you check out the basic searching section of the Ransack Wiki, you can find a list of predicates which you can pass in to customize how the search is performed for that given field, and it gives you the SQL output here as well. Another nice feature of Ransack is how easy it is to make sortable links. What if I want to click on one of these headers to change the sorting order of the products? Well, in the view, we have access to a sort link helper method where we can pass in uh, the search object and the name of the attribute we want to search by, in this case, the product's name. And then finally, the title of the link, which will be matching this to match the text of the column. So I just want to do this for each of the columns here in the table. So we have the uh, released on attribute here, which will be release date. And then we have the price for the products. Now reloading the page and voila, there are the uh, sortable links. We could just click on them and change the direction or sort by any of the columns just like that. Next, I wanna show you some of the more advanced features of Ransack because there's a lot more to the search form builder than meets the eye. It allows you to create completely dynamic search forms where the user has complete control over what column and predicate is used in the search. So instead of having concrete search fields like this, let's make something more dynamic. Uh, there's a method we can call uh, that's condition fields on a search form builder, and this will pass another form builder in for each conditions of the search. And so we want to display some fields to handle that condition. So on each of the conditions, I'll call attribute fields. And for each of the attributes, I want to call uh, attribute select, which will display a list of attributes on the product model. And then after the attribute, I'll display a predicate select, which will determine how that given attribute is searched by. And then after that predicate, we need to display a field for the value and a condition can have multiple values, so we can call value fields. And for each of the uh, value fields, let's display a text field and just call it a value. So this may seem a little bit verbose with all of these blocks and form builders being juggled around, but what it generates is pretty cool. Drum roll please as I reload, and we get nothing. And that's because searches have no conditions by default. Not a problem, we can just build a new empty condition here on the controller called build condition. 
and reload the page. And this now gives us three fields where we can select the column we want to search by. And let's say name uh, contains, let's say Catan, and that will mimic the search that we performed earlier. And we can say uh, price is uh, less than $20, and we can really customize our search this way. What's cool is that you can even toss associations into the mix. Our attribute select call allows you to pass in an associations option and a product belongs to a category. So I'll toss that in here. And reloading the page. And we can now see we have category options here in the attribute menu. And we can say the category's name. And we can, uh, let's just say equals electronics. Now I'll change this as well so we get some results. And there we go, we get the uh, electronic products that are less than $20. Now it would be nice if we can add and remove these conditions dynamically using JavaScript. Uh, this is a little bit complicated, but it, the pattern works similar to nested forms. So I'm going to base my solution off of episode 196, which you might wanna watch for more details. All right, I'm going to do this very quickly here. The first thing I want to do is move these condition fields into a partial, which I'll render here, called condition fields, and I'll toss that form builder object as an F variable into the partial. So I need to make that partial called condition fields.html.erb. I'll paste that in, do some fixing up here, and change that variable to use the one we passed in. Oh, and while we're here, I'll also add this link to remove these fields, which I'll override the functionality with JavaScript. Next, going to my application helper, I'm going to paste in this link to add fields helper method, which works very similar to what I show in episode 196. Check that out for details. And then back in my index template, I'll paste in a call to this method, which will generate a link for creating conditions. The last step is the JavaScript to get all this working. I'll just paste that into this product's coffee script file. And this is all it needs to add those fields dynamically. So let's see if that worked. Reloading this page, and there are the links, which we can add conditions and remove them easily through JavaScript. So this works pretty great. However, one issue is that if the user adds too many conditions, they might run into the limit of how much can be passed in through a get request. Uh, to get around this, one solution is to use a post request instead. So going into the routes file, I'm going to add a block to my products resource here and add a collection action of type post called search. And I'm going to redirect that to the product's index action because I want it to basically behave the same way. And then in the search form, we can change the URL to be that uh, search products path and set the uh, method to be post. So now when I perform a search on the products, the data is sent through a post request instead of through the URL. However, we still have a problem with the sort links. You can see when I click one here, it actually performs a get request on that search page. And this doesn't work at all. So instead of handling sorting through links like this, you might want to consider moving it up into the form itself. And Ransack can help with this as well. So I'll make a div with a class of field here, and we can call a sort of fields on the form builder, and that will pass in another form builder object because there might be multiple sorting fields. And for each of these, we can pass a sort select, and it will generate the select menus for sorting by different fields. Now, since there's no sorting specified by default in the controller, we can build one like we did in the conditions. So we can just call build sort on the search, but only do this if the uh, search sorts are empty. And I actually want to have that similar functionality for the conditions as well, so we don't keep adding conditions if we already have some. Now our search page has these sorting fields where we can choose to sort by price and ascending or descending order, and it will perform that sorting. Now there may be other cases where you have some links that you need to carry over the search conditions but can't happen through the form, such as pagination links. And for those, uh, there are a couple of solutions around that. One is to use some JavaScript to submit the link as a post request. Another option is to persist the search parameters in the database, like I show in episode 111. Well, that's it for this episode on Ransack. It makes it easier than ever to create powerful search forms. One thing I didn't cover here is configuring Ransack. You can check out the wiki for some documentation on that. Also, check out the Ransack demo app. This includes a more complete advanced search feature where you can add multiple sortings or even add condition groups so you can specify all or any uh, matching conditions. Well, thanks for watching. I hope you find this useful. In the pro episode this week, I show how the strong parameters gem makes it easy to protect attributes even when you have complex authorization logic. 
the functionality will likely be added to Rails 4, so it's a good idea to learn how it works. To watch that episode and gain access to all previous Pro and Revised episodes, visit railscast.com pro, and you can sign up there for just $9 per month.